Hi there, I'm Miran Veer Singh, I'm an emergency medicine registrar and I'm doing a very short video to do with the specific issue of cutting of hair in order for the FFP3 masks, which are the tight fitting masks, to fit correctly. And this issue, I'm keeping it very specific and in particular to those like myself who belong to the Sikh faith and those that in particular um, keep their hair and do not cut their hair due to our religious code of conduct and due to our spiritual beliefs. So just a bit of a background, these FFP3 masks are very tight fitted masks and in order for them to function correctly, two things must be in order. One, there can't be a barrier between the skin and the mask, such as hair, in order for it to function. And also the person must have the right bone structure in order for the mask to fit correctly. These FFP3 masks are only used for what we call aerosol generating procedures and therefore are specific to certain areas and only certain departments within the hospital and therefore in all other areas the standard surgical fluid repellent mask would actually be sufficient and it's actually loose fitting and having facial hair would not impede the function of that mask so this is very specific to those FFP3 masks which are the tighter fitting masks. Now obviously for people who tend to cut their hair this issue is not going to be a problem for them cutting their hair on their face in order to aid assistance of the fitting of the tighter fitting masks but those that belong to a Sikh background who do not cut their hair this is and potentially may be of an issue and this is what I'm going to be highlighting. So the employees that I work with and where I have friends and colleagues working in other departments, in other hospitals, um, up and down the country, they have actually been very proactive in looking out and then being quite understanding of the Sikh belief. Why a practicing Sikh would be keeping their hair pertains to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, our 10th Guru, who in one of their 52 hukams, known as a command, ordered that a practicing Sikh in order of the Khalsa would be keeping their hair and it's also part of the Sikh code of conduct known as the Sikh Mariyata. Keeping of a Sikh's hair offers multiple different benefits. So there's a deep personal religious belief and there's also the meditative benefit of keeping a hair and also the spiritual benefit that's gained from keeping of hair is for the identity of a Sikh so that we can be identified and stand out from the crowd as our role as being part of the Khalsa is to stand up against injustice and to stand up for righteousness. What they have done in the departments are either moving one to an area where there are no aerosol generating procedures done and therefore a normal fluid repellent surgical mask can be worn or uh, well, the second thing is actually providing the powered air supplied respirators which you may have seen on television and the news which are those helmet which have their own powered air supply given to the practitioner remember that even if someone has no facial hair their actual facial bone structure may not allow the tight fitting ffp3 mask to fit and therefore they would fail the fit test and therefore they should also be offered these powered air supplied respirators and therefore those devices should actually be present um, to be utilized in where there are aerosol generating procedures needing to be done or occurring in order to protect the practitioners from coronavirus. If an employer does ask a Sikh with regards to cutting of the hair it may be the case that they're not actually aware of your practicing belief and what that means to oneself and therefore, in the first instance, it would be very useful just to have a chat with them and educate them with regards to this issue. Secondly, it would be important just to remind them also about the use of the air-powered respirators that should be uh, available for use and the ability to use them in those areas where an aerosol-generating procedure would be done. Or thirdly, actually working in an area of the department where one is able to wear a surgical uh, fluid repellent mask. If you look at some of the other countries that are dealing with coronavirus pandemic, a lot of their practitioners are actually wearing these air-powered respirator devices in order to provide themselves with maximum protection for themselves, but also for their patients as well. And therefore, actually that would be having the best practice done 
if one was to wear these type of devices than compared to just the conventional mask. Still persistent pressure and an understanding cannot be met, then it should be escalated to the seniors within the team, for example, the consultants, the line managers, and also it would be important to make contact with the British Medical Association, the BMA, and also to have a discussion with the British Sikh Doctors Organization. And it would be important to record all the conversations that you are having, the names, the titles, the times and the dates of who you discussed with, what was discussed and what was said in order to provide a evidence and a timeline of what was said and what happened and the outcomes of those discussions. Important practice for us all is in order to maintain patient safety and also safety for ourselves. It is very easy for a practicing Sikh doc to maintain high levels of infection and control prevention by wearing the air powered supply respirators in order to protect themselves and protect the patient. And therefore, there really should not be an issue within any of the trusts or departments in order for a seat doctor to keep their hair and therefore the issue of cutting hair should not really arise but in the event that it does the previous points that I've pointed out would be very useful to point out and also then to discuss with the appropriate organizations that I've mentioned such as the British Seat Doctors Organization and the British Medical Association. Thank you very much for listening.